Today, actually, I will be taking you around something very important that is a reintroduction. Knowing the fact when we are losing species every day, we have dying, what you call, rivers, we have drying wetlands, we have shrinking forest cover, and then which ultimately lead to extinction of many species. And therefore, reintroduction become very important tool for conservation. So I'll be discussing about reintroduction, how it is important, and uh, what are the species which need to be reintroduced, and how one of the very important reintroduction program is in, in is it in progress in India. Knowing the fact that right from microbes to human beings constitute biodiversity, means biodiversity is very important for all of us. And uh, uh, it is also very important to understand that biodiversity is difficult to quantify precisely even with the tools and data resources that are available today and therefore to understand biodiversity it is very important to estimate it precisely uh, because it has a lot of consequences and its understanding can make you survive many many species and uh, therefore when you look at the global scenario there are global and local extinction of many species. There are many species which we have already lost. For example, when you look at one of the beautiful birds that is dodo, which we have lost long ago from Mauritius. It was a beautiful kind of uh, <coughs> pigeon which was surviving on an island of uh, Mauritius. But when human beings started settling on the island, slowly these birds disappeared because that was that would become very easiest prey to the human beings and um, then when human beings started introducing cats dogs etc they are nest being raided by those introduced mammals and ultimately we have lost this beautiful bird dodo similarly in from india and myanmar we have lost pink headed duck now it is restricted to you know postal stamp why it is which why we have lost because we become so greedy that most of the marshes which supported pink-headed duck slowly you know um, being occupied by human beings for their buildings for their agricultural practices we have drained those uh, marshes and we lost the habitat for pink-headed duck and now we don't have any pink-headed duck if you want to see you have to look at the photographs of pink-headed duck similarly there are many local extinction for example, in Delhi, we have already lost Tylophora indica, one of the very important medicinal plant for asthma. Similarly, another medicinal plant, which is Serapigia bulbosa, we have already lost. So, therefore, when you understand the biodiversity, its extent and consequences of your loss, that would give you an idea and direction that how you conserve them. And there are many species which are now restricted to single site in India. For example, the beautiful Barasinga. There are three species of Barasinga. If you see any deer which has antler, usually we, um, you know, identify those antlers as a Barasinga. But for your information, I must share that all deers with antlers are not Barasinga. The water Barasinga. There are three subspecies of Barasinga in India. One is Sarvas dubosely brandery. That is hard ground Barasinga. Uh, till recently, it was restricted to single site, that is Kanha National Park and Sanctuary. Only two years ago, it was reintroduced in Satpura Tiger Reserve in Madhya Pradesh, and it has now second population. Similarly, the other photograph down there, if you see, that is Sarvas Dubhauseli Dubhauseli, and that is another Barasinga, which you find only in Dudhava Tiger Reserve. And there is another subspecies of Barasinga, which is restricted to single site in Kaziranga National Park that is in Assam. So, these species are so important, they have a small, what do you call, distribution range. And if anything happens to them, quickly, we wipe out the population. Similarly, you look at this beautiful deer. This is a dancing deer, which you call it as Saras Italy. It is restricted to single site in Manipur. There is a lake called Kebul Lamjo. And it actually walks on floating vegetation what you call as foam D and when it walks it try to controls in movement and therefore it appears from a distance that the deer is dancing such a beautiful deer 
with an excellent arrangement of antlers if you look at it and since it is a, it has a single side then it has little hope to survive for longer period of time similarly the hangul cervus elephas it is restricted only in kashmir and it is known as kashmir stag and unfortunately it has we have only few individual left in india and it requires serious attention and only then we can you know protect this beautiful animal what we call as kashmir stag or cervus elephas <coughs> there is another species of plant which is restricted to single site on a khasi hill of magalia and it is insectivorous plant which we call as nepenthes khasiana and there are many plants but uh, uh, this particular species that nepenthes you find which largely depend on what you call insect and many a times on a small uh, mammals and uh, you know reptiles they feed on and a few hundred left if we lose this precious species then probably you know giving response to entire world would be difficult knowing the fact india is a country where we worship plants and animals and if we lose this beautiful plant then probably entire world will look at us that how we behave with our plants and animals so a study suggest that when you look at the pre human extinction rate it was very slow it was just 0.1 extinction per million species but the way human beings are acting today the current extinction rate is approximately 100 extinction per million species per year we are heading towards sixth mass extinction we should not worry about extinction because extinction is a process which happens but the rate of extinction is so fast that many species we lo lose even without knowing them and that would be irony that would be the irony for the entire human what do you call uh, community that the many species which are very important for human beings and its survival will lose it without understanding its uses therefore as i told you earlier that there are many locals and global local and global extinction uh, we lost tigers in sariska and panna tiger is a recently in 2006 7 but slowly we have reintroduced them and the population is doing very well and therefore it gives us a hope that the species which we are losing probably through reintroduction we can repopulate these species and give them some lease of life so what is the solution for disappearing free ranging population so in my opinion reintroduction is the best solution and probably the only solution in today's world so what is reintroduction how we see reintroduction actually reintroduction is very important tool to realize evolutionary potential and to promote genetic vigor it is very important to redistribute the population in their original historical geographical ranges because reintroduction may be initiated to repopulate the area where the species of interest once roamed and have now completely wiped out that is the only way that in the absence of ecological corridor now it is not possible that free ranging population can move from one place to other place and get redistributed in their geographical ranges where once they exist so what is the solution so now solution is reintroduction you can take some individuals and reintroduce somewhere else where originally they were exist so today when you look at the uh, among mega carnivore the most threatened species would be asiatic lion and it is very interesting to see that asiatic lion exist only in india only in india when you look at the uh, former historical geogra geographical ranges the asiatic lion was roamed in asia from palestine in the west to plamau in the eastern india and now it is restricted to single site that is green in color if you look at it huge wide range of what you call global distribution of asiatic lion now shrink to a small pocket in gujarat and that is the irony it suggests that how we look at our species and how we actually you know handle our species <clears throat> 
when you look at the distribution of asiatic lion in uh, india the historical distribution in india subcontinent is very unique if you look at it even we had asiatic lion in haryana it was reported from delhi near delhi university we have delhi ridge which is called as kamla nadu ridge you find asiatic lion there similarly in madhya pradesh it was in gwalior guna guna very close to shopur district there are many places where asiatic lion was distributed but now it is restricted to single site that is gir national park and sanctuary in gujarat so what is the current status when you look at the current status of asiatic lion is it the single site which is gir national park and sanctuaries that is the last home today of world population and today we have over 500 individual lions but they are facing serious extinction threat because conservation biology suggests that if a, a small population restricted to single site they face variety of extinction threat variety what are those variety if any epidemic comes a disease comes the entire population can wiped out in one go and then entire world will complaining towards us that a country which is worshiping animals and plants could not protect an animal which is restricted only to india and that is the point we need to see seriously a beautiful majestic animals animal like asiatic lion should survive for longer period of time so therefore looking at the single population uh, and uh, the growth of the population from a very small uh, nucleus population of 1820 it itself suggests that the homozygosity increases so much that it has poor variability and it raises a lot of questions about the genetic diversity of this species and therefore any epidemic can create huge problem for this individual species and therefore asiatic lion of gir forest become most threatened population of large carnivore in the world <clears throat> so finally a concept came for reintroduction of asiatic lion knowing the fact that today for example if you look at an analogy that you have 500 eggs in a single tokri and in a single basket a person is carrying on his head and suddenly he falls down so entire egg will fell down and not a single egg will survive and you will have nothing in your hand and looking at this scenario a population and habitat viability analysis workshop was held in badodra in 1993 and forest department from different states like gujarat uttar pradesh madhya pradesh rajasthan and haryana they were asked to find out potential sites for introduction of asiatic lion and after looking at the various aspect um, three areas were shortlisted finally for possible reintroduction of asiatic lion and they were darra jawahar sagar and sitamata sanctuary in rajasthan and kuno valley sanctuary in madhya pradesh it is very important to understand that iucn has made a proper guideline to see that how reintroduction can took place and on the basis of that entire studies has been carried out and finally so finally kuno valley sanctuary selected as a potential site when the site was selected as a potential site many a study short term studies were carried out to look at the sociological and ecological parameters that whether this sanct this sanctuary is suitable for in reintroduction or not because when you look at the reintroduction process there are few very important things you need to look at it a you need to look at the site that uh, what was the reason for extermination of species in question do this sanctuary is ready to accept uh, these species at present what is the status of sanctuary at present and uh, whether that uh, uh, reason for extermination of species have been removed or not what is the prey base etc what is the status of habitat all these things need to be looked after and therefore you need to look at sociological and ecological parameters and for which many short term studies were carried out looking at the sociological and ecological parameters and ultimately kuno wildlife sanctuary of shopur district in northwest madhya pradesh selected as a potential site for introduction of asiatic lion when we when this 
site was selected as a second home, there were 24 villages inside and more than 100,000 cattle largely uh, you know, dependent on the habitat of uh, uh, what do you call uh, herbivores and wild prey population was very low but it had potential to improve it. So therefore the first and foremost thing was to find out a solution that how 24 villages can be rehabilitated outside. And it was very difficult because rehabilitating a human being outside is not easy task. And therefore, a committee was formed by the state government. Uh, and that committee visited the site and asked villagers that are they willing to go out? Because the life of the villagers were very harsh inside. Because during monsoon, a river, Kuno, which flows right in the middle of the sanctuary, uh, was not allowing, uh, uh, you know, movement of the villages and therefore they were limit they had limited movement the schools the other facilities were not there i tell you one story when first time i went there and uh, i met then divisional forest officer jasvi singh chohan uh, i went there to work in kuno and uh, he took me on his jeep inside the park when we just went inside the park we have we saw that one woman pregnant woman in, his, in her advanced stage was coming on bullock cart. We quickly took that woman on our car and drove, tried to drove to the nearest tehsil, but unfortunately that woman could not survive. Then we also tried to interact with the villages and ultimately villages agreed and a program was made supported by government of India and all the 24 villages were taken out. Within the sanctuary there were 100,000 cattle these cattle were coming from neighboring state like Rajasthan and they were straying inside the sanctuary during entire what do you call uh, monsoon and depleting entire habitat and therefore there was no space for prey base to grow. It was surprising to see that the Cheetal was there, Sambar was there, wild pigs were there, Chinkara was there but they were not breeding. The reason we tried to find out because the water was occupied by water hole was occupied by cattle, all the water all along Kuno and human beings and the grassland was occupied by cattle, livestock and therefore these animals had characteristic that until unless they have food security they cannot breed. They are unlike human beings I must tell you. They are very unique. If you look at the sanctuary, it's a beautiful sanctuary, it looks like a leaf and right in the middle uh, uh, a serrated leaf has a midri in the form of a river which is Kuno river which uh, just bisect the sanctuary into two half it is situated in Shopur district and the total area of sanctuary is being maintained as 1269 square kilometer as a division and the sanctuary area is about 345 a square kilometer <coughs> and today it has eight ranges if you look at it now it has huge area and now government has proposed to elevate this sanctuary as a national park and uh, today when you look at the entire Kuno wildlife division which, uh, which is very huge and it has uh, now eight ranges you can think about it. it's a huge area and it is also surrounded by huge forest area of Shopur uh, territorial division so almost when you look at it, it uh, covers around 3,000 square kilometer of area which further connects to towards the Rantambo Tiger Reserve. So it's a beautiful area. Actually, River Kuno gives uh, life to entire Kuno Valley Sanctuary. When you look at these slides, it itself suggests that this is magnificent river. And as I showed you in the map that this river bisects the entire sanctuary. And uh, <coughs> it's a small river. And in fact, seasonal river, it uh, does not flow throughout the year. Mm, but yes, water stays all along in the form of water pool, what locally uh, people call it as a day. And those day actually being utilized by uh, animals even during pinch period in the summer. And therefore, this river is actually lifeline for entire sanctuary. So when you look at Kuno Valley Sanctuary, uh, where uh, 24 villages rehabilitated outside the sanctuary, grazing prohibited, process of habitat improvement initiated long back and steps taken to improve prey base. 
for which actually I have been involved also in capturing you know Nilgai and we initiated uh, mass capture of Nilgai we prepared a protocol for Madhya Pradesh government in association with Wildlife Institute of India where we worked in uh, Bhind where we tried to see that there were a lot of crop raiding Nilgai and there were many complaints of the uh, people uh, therefore we used uh, drop net technique to capture uh, uh, Nilgai and transport uh, transported them to the Kuno wildlife sanctuary when you look at uh, Kuno uh, uh, villages inside it was a very remote area and since it falls under Chambal region Dokoyat bandits were serious problem and therefore villages kept guarding their village uh, by making huge machan if you look at the photograph and uh, uh, two person holding gun and looking at the uh, all trails which enters into the village and there was a small school uh, of the village and the only transported medium of transport was bullock cart but now they have been rehabilitated out where they had a small check dam of Kumari river and they largely they have been rehabilitated near Agra village of Shopur district in Bijaypur Tehsil the schools was made the schools was constructed road <coughs> was made and now lift irrigation pump everything was given to the village and they are happily staying there they, are, they have beautiful agriculture field when you look at the floral description of the sanctuary which is proposed second home for Asiatic lion it actually a typical dry deciduous forest dominated by Enogesis pendula this is a species which once upon a time we had plenty in Delhi which we have lost there are few individual are left near Dholakwa this is Kardai and it is very important species. Then we have Khair there, Khair, which is Katha, Katha made up of this Khair. Khair is a very important species of any digestive condition. It is Acacia Katechu. Then you have Anagesis latifolia. And the another important species which is Salai, what you call as Boswellia serrata. And that Boswellia serrata is such a beautiful species, I'll let you know later, that how the native and local community utilize salai for their own purpose so this is the characteristic of uh, kuno uh, being a dry deciduous uh, forest when you look at this these are the forest this is khair forest kardai forest and uh, khair forest during summer because it's a dry for a dry forest then probably during summer finding single leaf would be very difficult similarly kardai forest during summer becomes so dry but the fallen leaves of those kardai become very important food material for all herbivores including chital, sambar and other species. Similarly, this is uh, Dava forest. And interestingly, when you look at this green uh, forest of Salai, that become very important. And it is important because it is important source of livelihood support for the neighborhood communities. And in Kuno, uh, there were Saharia tribe inside who were you know, uh, rehabilitated outside. There were about uh, 1,500 uh, families which, uh, which have been rehabilitated out. Um, and all along Kuno, you have plenty of Salai forest, what you call as Boswellia serrata. And I have seen that uh, during uh, marriage, actually uh, the girls were getting trees in Dori, like five trees and 10 trees because during uh, a particular season they take out resins out of it and those resins are very important for making many material including lohwan which is being utilized for many religious purpose so it has important economic value for the neighborhood communities similarly when you look at the abundant agriculture field from where villages have been re relocated and rehabilitated outside they become important habitat for the various animals if you see Nilgai, Chinkara and wild pigs you can see. When you look at this slide, this is the characteristic feature of Kuno wildlife sanctuary. Uh, actually, when you look at this forest type, this represents savanna woodland where you have huge grassland interspersed with some of the tree species and it gives you beautiful uh, feeling that how a species like Asiatic lion can roam around and capture prey uh, and survive for a longer period of time. Similarly, the succession in different grass species are taking place very well. And when you look at the faunal species, you find all fauna which you find in any 
typical dry desert forest and most important is cheetal which is prey base for lion most important prey base for lion in gir which you find in plenty in kuno these are the important prey base and these are the important uh, bird species which you find and this is some of the major carnivore uh, uh, we found uh, during the study which includes uh, uh, um, uh, leopard also and this is the outcome of my study when uh, I have suggested that how entire forest can be divided into eight forest types and uh, cheetal was one of the very important prey base. Uh, based on my study actually when uh, I have done everything when and then we requested government of India that we need to get some lions, Asiatic lion from Gil but Gujarat government refused to share any lions and therefore a PIL was fined in Supreme Court of India in 2006 with a, a very simple uh, prey that uh, Wildlife Institute has um, prepared some basic thing for uh, Kuno for the reintroduction of Asiatic lion that should be implemented and uh, uh, when you look at it, uh, it this uh, entire PIL gone for six years in which we have presented many documents and this was one of them that how cheetal population slowly started growing from six uh, individual per square kilometer to about 60 today. Similarly, other species started growing in. And right in the middle, government of India has decided since the state government is not sharing a sharing lion, can't we go for African cheetah? But we requested Supreme Court that don't allow African cheetah because when you look at the growing prey base, the most important catchable prey base is Chinkara, which won't uh, uh, growing well because the population is reducing and therefore when population reduces, when population reduces, uh, this cheetah will go out and there will be a serious man-animal conflict. And finally, Supreme Court has directed that uh, you have to make already a plan was made in 2002-2016 and Supreme Court has directed for many other species including Asiatic lion suggested that you plan for a species recovery in, in the entire area and finally Supreme Court had made expert committee and we, who has visited a uh, couple of times in Kuno and proposed that reintroduction is the only hope for recovery of many threatened species but unfortunately when you look at it uh, Asiatic lion could not found its second home so far. It's very sad to see that even though Supreme Court has given it directions in year uh, 2013, still Asiatic lion did not found its second home. But when you look at the latest news, uh, Gir itself lost 184 lions in 2016-17, which itself suggests that the request for Kuno was only two pride initially which covers not more than 20 individuals and what is the status of Asiatic lion you see now that when we are losing many many lions every year why government is not thinking about reintroducing lion in Kuno because if animals are lying due to disease then it's a serious indication we need to address it quickly recently principal chief conservator of forest suggested that as per supreme court directives we need to look at the IUCN guidelines and I don't know how much time it will take because reintroduction is the only solution for Asiatic lion and we need many more free ranging population of Asiatic lion including Kuno Valley Sanctuary otherwise it would be very difficult. Thank you so much.